Hello everyone. Today we'll be going over systems of linear equations and two variables. Okay, so say for example 3x plus 2y equals 7 or something like that. Ah, yeah, so this is a linear equation. Where you pick a value of x and a value of y that would make this true. Now, a system of linear equations will have two or more linear equations. So you have two or more. In your equations in the same plane. Now, the only way to find a solution is if you have an x value and a y value that's true for both equations. So, a solution. of a system is an ordered pair and remember your ordered pair is just x comma y of numbers that is a solution to both that's the key word there, both equations in the system. All right, so let's do a quick example. Remember, if I'm moving too quickly, pause the video, finish writing it out, and then you can move on. Okay, so you want to determine if, say, the ordered pair 12, 6 is a solution to the system. Okay, so let's say the two linear equations we have is 2x minus 3y equals 6 and x equals 2y. Okay, so when they give you a solution and they want to know if it is a solution to both, well, we're going to give you a possible solution. Have the solution 12 6. That just means that x is equal to 12 and y is equal to 6. So, what we're going to do is we're going to change both those x and y values to see if they end up being true. Okay. So, let me go ahead and separate that a little bit. Okay, so first we have our 2x minus 3y equals 6, and we have x equals 2y. So we replace, we replace x equals 12, y equals 6. That gives us 2 times 12, 
minus 3 times 6 equals 6. We made our x equal to 12 and our y for 6. And for this one, x equals 2y gives us 12 equals 2 times 6. Okay, so if we go ahead and simplify this, 2 times 12 is 24, minus 3 times 6, which is 18, equals 6. 24 minus 18 is 6. So we end up with 6 equals 6, which is a true statement. For this one, we have 12 equals 2 times 6. So 12 is equal to 12, which is also a true statement. Now, since both of these are true statements, when you plug in 12 and 6, we know that 12 6 is a solution. Okay, so that's pretty straightforward. You're just plugging in your x and y values. All right, so let's do another example. Okay, so what if we want to determine if negative 1, 2 is a solution to the system and for this system we're going to pick the two linear equations x plus 2y equals 3 and 4x minus y equals 6. Okay, so to find out if this is a solution, we do the exact same thing we did before. So you have negative 1, 2 as your possible solution. That means that x is equal to negative 1 and y is equal to 2. Okay, so just like we did on the previous problem, we go ahead and we plug in our values. X equals negative 1, so this is just negative 1, Y is equal to 2, equals 3, and for our next one, you have 4X minus Y equals 6, we plug in X equals negative 1, so you have 4 times negative 1, minus Y equals 2, so minus 2, So we have negative 1 plus 4 equals 3. So negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So the left side gives us 3. The right side is 3. So this is true. Now if we solve this one, 4 times negative 1 is negative 4. Minus 2 equals 6. Negative 4 minus 2 is actually negative 6. And on the right side, we have 6. So this is a false statement because negative 6 does not equal 6. Okay. Now, since both would have to be true for this to be a solution, it means that negative 1, 2 is not a solution. Simply because it does not make both equations true equations. Well, true. When plugged in. Alright, 
So in this case, they gave you a solution and they wanted you to see if that solution was true. For the upcoming example, we have to find our solution. And we're going to give you two methods to find that solution. Now, the first method will be called substitution. So we're going to be solving system of linear equations using the substitution method. So, for example, we wanted to solve the system using substitution. And that system is 2x plus y and x equals y plus 2. Okay. Now the first thing you want to do when using substitution is find an individual, individual variable that you can replace or substitute. So for this one, x is by itself. So we can just use that. Since x is in the second equation, we're going to replace that in the first equation. So we're going to replace x with y plus 2 in the first equation. Since our first equation is 2x plus y equals 10, once we replace it, x is y plus 2, so it's 2y plus 2 plus y equals 10. Okay, so instead of having two different variables, you just have a y variable. So now, we can just solve for y. Let's just kind of straighten that y up a little bit. Okay. Now to solve for y, we have to distribute that 2 to get rid of those parentheses. So we have 2y plus 2 times 2 is 4 plus y equals and we can go ahead and just combine those two. 2y two plus 1y, remember y is the same as 1y. 2y plus 1y equals 3y. Let me go ahead and move that up a little. So we have 3y plus 4 equals 10. So we can go ahead and subtract 4 from both sides. 4 minus 4 is 0, so that disappears. And we have 3y equals 6, and 10 minus 4 is 6. And if you divide both sides by 3, anything divided by itself is 1. So we have y equals 2.
Now, once we get that y equals 2, our second step, to plug y equals 2 into either equation. to solve for x. Normally, I would just pick the equation that's the simplest. It would work in both, but just pick the one that's the least amount of work. Okay, so I'll just pick the x equals y plus 2. Because it's also Since x is equal to y plus 2, We know that y is equal to 2. That will give us x equals 2 plus 2, or just x equals 4. Okay, so that gives us a solution of x equals 4 and y equals 2. So your answer for solution. Or y equals 2, or write it as an ordered pair of 4, 2. And you can always double check your answers by plugging x equals 4 and y equals 2 into your orig original equation. So if you plug in x equals 4, y equals 2, if x is equal to 4, 2 times 4 is 8. Plus 2 is 10, so 10 equals 10, that's true. x equals 4, y equals 2, so 4 equals 2 plus 2 is true. So you know this is true. Alright, so let's go to the next example. Okay, so what if we want to solve this system? And of course, we're going to be still using substitution. So y equals 3x and 5x minus y equals negative 2. Okay. Now with this one, we can see that our y is equal to 3x. So we already know what the y value is. So we're going to do just what we did before. And we're going to replace y with 3x in the second equation. Okay, so that means if we have 5x minus y equals negative 2, and we know that y is equal to 3x, that gives us 5x minus 3x equals negative 2. All we do is replace our 5x with 3x. Okay, so now we just go ahead and combine those. 5x minus 3x is 2x equals negative 2. So if we go ahead and divide both sides by 2, Anything divided by itself is just 1. That means that x is equal to negative 2 divided by 2 is just negative 1. Okay, which brings us to our second step.
since we know that x is equal to negative 1, replace x with negative 1 in either equation. To solve for y. Okay, so since we know that y is equal to 3x is our easiest equation of the two. And we know that x is equal to negative 1. That means that y is equal to 3 times negative 1. So we know 3 times negative 1 will give us y equals negative 3. Okay, so that means your answer is negative 1, or x equals negative 1, y equals negative 3. Or you can write it as an ordered pair, negative 1, negative 3. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. All right, so let's go to the next example. This is where you have to do a little bit of rewriting, but I don't think it'll be much more difficult for you than the previous two examples. Okay, so what if we wanted to solve the system using substitution? And the system we are going to solve is x plus 2y equals 7 and 2x plus 2y equals 13. Oops, let me kind of clean up that y a little bit. Okay. Now with this one, we don't have a particular x equals something or y equals something, but we want to use substitution. So if we don't have an x equals something or y equals something, we make one. Okay, so quick note. So we have x plus 2y equals 7. If we subtract 2y from both sides, we end up with x equals negative 2y. Well, you can make it 7 minus 2y. It doesn't really matter. x equals 7 minus 2y. Okay. So now we just get this and substitute into the second equation. into the second equation. Okay, so that means if our second equation is 2x plus 2y equals 13, and we know that x is 7 minus 2y. That means we just replace that x. So 2 times 7 minus 2y plus 2y equals 13. So the whole point of that was instead of having two different variables and not being able to solve for one, we now just have one variable that we can solve for. So now we solve for y. Okay. 
Okay, so to do that, we go ahead and distribute our two to get rid of those parentheses. Two times seven is 14. So we have 14 minus two, two times negative two, four y, plus that two y that's already there equals 13. Okay, we can go ahead and combine our like terms here. Negative 4 plus 2 is negative 2. So we have 14. Combining those two gives us minus 2y equals 13. So now we go ahead and subtract 14 from both sides because we want to solve for, for y. 14 minus 14 is 0. And that gives us negative 2y. 13 minus 14 is negative 1. Okay, so now we go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. Because anything divided by itself is just going to be 1. So we have y equals positive one half, since negative divided by negative is positive. Okay, so we get our substitution, and we solve for y. So once we solve for one of the variables, we just plug it into either equation. To solve for x. Okay. Now the good thing about this is we already know that x is equal to 7 minus 2y. So we can definitely use that to solve for x. You don't have to go back to this equation or the other or use the other equation. We can just use this one by replacing our y value. That's why I drew a little square around it so we kind of jump out at you a little bit. Okay, so since we know that, move this up a little bit more. X plus 2Y equals 7. And we already solved that Y equals 1 half. That means that X plus 2 times 1 half equals 7. 2 times 1 half, those 2's cancel out, so you end up with 1. So we have x plus 1 equals 7. So if we go ahead and subtract 1 from both sides, and I'll write it underneath there. We end up with x equals 7 minus 1 is 6. So we have our x equals 6, y equals 1 half. So that means our answer x equals 6, y equals 1 half, or we can write it as an ordered pair of 6, 1 half. Hopefully that made a little bit of sense. All right, so we're going to go to the next example. And I want you to take a few minutes to see if you can figure it out first. Okay, so what if we want to solve the system using substitution? All right, and that particular system is 4x plus y equals 3, and 
3x plus 5y equals 15. So no, oh, that's right, I was getting ready to explain it. But first, I want you to press pause, take a few minutes to solve this one on your own. Let's clean that y up a little. And then we'll go ahead and solve that one. Okay, so go ahead and press pause. Okay. Hopefully you've pressed pause, you tried to work it out on your own, and you have your answer. So now we're going to go ahead and go through it. Okay. So the first thing you want to do is you want to get either an X or a Y by itself. You could do it down here, but that will be a little bit complicated and have a whole bunch of steps. Here, it's a whole lot easier just to go ahead and solve for Y because you just subtract 4X from both sides. Okay, so we solve 4x plus y equals 3 for y. Okay, so if we subtract 4x from both sides, we know that y is equal to 3 minus 4x. Or you can put negative 4x plus 3. It doesn't matter at all. Okay, so that means you get this. We substitute into the second equation. Okay, so our second equation, remember that's 3x plus 5y equals 15, okay, but we already know that y is equal to 3 minus 4x, so that means we have 3x plus 5, and we place our y with 3 minus 4x equals 15. Okay, so instead of having an x and a y, we just have x variables to solve for. So that means we're going to solve for x. Okay, so first thing we have to do, get rid of those parentheses. So we go ahead and distribute that 5. So we have 3x plus 5 times 3 is 15. Minus 5 times negative 4. Well, 5 times 4 is 20. So we have minus 20 x equals 15. Okay, so we go ahead and we combine our like terms. So 3 minus 20 is negative 17. We have negative 17x plus 15. Can't forget about that 15 right there equals 15. So if we subtract 15 from both sides, 15 minus 15 is 0, 15 minus 15 is 0. So we actually end up with negative 17x equals 0. So if we divide both sides by negative 17, we have x equals 0 which happens sometimes. Okay. So since we have one of our variables solved for, we just plug this into either equation to solve for y. Now remember, you can plug it into this one or this one, and it would still work. But this one, just a whole lot easier. So we'll use that, y equals 3 minus 4x. Okay, so since y equals 3 minus 
for x, and we know that x is equal to zero, that means that y is equal to three minus four times zero. Okay, so four times zero is zero. So that means y is equal to three minus zero or just y is equal to three. Okay, so your answer is x equals zero, y equals three, or we can write it as an ordered pair of zero. So hopefully that's the answer you received and everything is starting to make sense. All right, so let's go ahead to the next part. Of our systems of equations, and we're going to look at the type of system. Types of systems. Okay, so there are three types. We're going to have our consistent, inconsistent, and dependent. Okay, those are our three systems. Okay, so we're going to start with consistent. Okay, and a consistent system, they have at least, not just, but at least one solution. And the reason why is, let's say you have your graph here, which is your x-axis, and that's your y-axis. And let's say you plug in values for equation 1, and your equation 1 had the graph that looks like this. Okay, so this is your equation 1 graph right there. So let's say you had equation two and you were graphing that one. And once you graph that one, your equation two looks like this. The point where they intersect each other, that's your solution. That's your solution point. As long as you have at least one, we know this is consistent. Consistent system solution. Okay, so all the examples we've done before, where you had a solution that you found out, if you graph both of the equations in the system, then you say, okay, the solution is this here. That would be the point where those two graphs cross each other. So that's how you know it's consistent. So now we're going to look at an inconsistent system. Let's bring this up a little bit. Okay, now inconsistent systems do not have a solution. Okay. So if there, if you have two graphs or two linear equations that never cross each other, the only way that can happen is if they're parallel. 
to each other. Okay. Now up here, this is just the kind of a graphical explanation. So if we wanted to have an inconsistent system, graphically, it would look kind of like this. Okay, so we have our x-axis, and we have our y-axis. Okay, so let's say we plug in values for x and y. Let's say our equation 1, once we decided to graph it, look like this. So this is our equation 1. And our equation 2, once we decided to graph it, looks like this. Okay. These are two parallel lines. They have the exact same slope. They're going in the exact same direction. They will never, ever, 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 ever cross each other. So that's how you know you have an inconsistent system. Okay. Now throughout the examples, I'm going to show you what it would look like to figure out a consistent or inconsistent system without having to draw it out just by the equation. Okay. So last but not least, we have an dependent systems. Okay. They have identical solutions. Okay. Now, if we were going to look at the graph of a dependent solution, and go ahead and make our x and y axis. Of course, this is our graphical portion of the explanation. Okay, so let's say if we have example one and we plug in all our values of our equation, let's say this is our equation one once we graph it. Now let's say if we plug in the values for equation two, and we ended up with the exact same graph. All the points for equation one and equation two match right up. They're basically right on top of each other. And they will just go in that same direction forever and ever. That's how you know you have a dependent system. Okay. Now, one additional thing you want to remember about a dependent system dependent system are also consistent systems. Okay. Because remember, the definition of a consistent system, go back up, is that you have at least one solution. Okay. So you have at least one solution. You're okay because for a dependent system, you have an infinite number of solutions. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, so what I'm going to do is in a couple of the examples, I'm going to show you how to find out if your system is consistent 
inconsistent or dependent. Okay, so let's go to our next example. Okay, so what if we wanted to solve the system using substitution? So what if the system we are trying to solve is one half x minus y equals three. And x equals six plus two y. This would be our equation one, and this one's our equation two. Just so we know. Okay, so you can see here that we already have an x value by itself. That's the key. We're gonna have an x or a y value by itself. Since this is already by itself, we can just go ahead and use that one. Makes life easier. x is equal to 6 plus 2y, we're just going to replace x in equation 1. Okay, now since we're going to do that, we have 1 half x minus y equals 3 for our first equation. And we know that x is equal to 6 plus 2y. Okay. Since we know that x is equal to 6 plus 2y, we go ahead and we have 1 half and instead of x, just plug in 6 plus 2y. Minus y, because remember that y is still there equals three. Okay. So now, instead of having an x and a y variable, we just have y variable. So we go ahead and solve for y. Okay, now to do that, we go ahead and distribute our one half. So 1 half times 6, basically 6 divided by 2, which is 3. So we have 3 plus 1 half times 2, which is 1. So we have 1y, or we can just make it y, minus y equals 3. Now this is the kicker. You combine those two. You have y minus y. y minus y is just zero. So we know that y minus y equals zero. That means we're left with three equals three, which doesn't help us except for the fact that we know this is true. Now the fact that this is true is very important. Because as you can see, all of our variables disappear. And we're only left with a true statement. Okay, so when all of your variables disappear and you're just left with a true statement, see here when all the variables disappear. And you are left with a true, that's the key part here, 
statement. Then the equations. are equivalent and there are infinite solutions. So your answer is there are infinite solutions, which means this is a dependent system. Okay, now how would we know that's a dependent system? All we have to do, we go back to our original two equations. Okay, so we have one half minus y equals three. We have x equals six plus two y. Let's take this step. X equals six plus two y. Okay, so note, uh oh, bring up a little more, there we go. X is equal to six plus two y. Okay, that's our equation two. So if we subtract, 2y from both sides, we have x minus 2y equals 6. So what if we multiply each of these terms by 1 half? And that means we will end up with one half times x minus one half times two y equals one half times six. Okay, so we just multiply each term by one half. Okay, so that gives us one half times x minus. These two, so you have one half times two, or one half times two over one, which is just one. So you have one y, or just y, equals one half times six, the same as six divided by two, which is three. So you have one half x minus y equals three, one half x minus y equals three. So they're the exact same equation, just written a little bit differently. And at first glance, looking at it, you couldn't tell. At least I could. I don't know about everyone else. Some of you may be a lot better at this than I am. Who knows? But they are the same equation. Okay. So they're dependent. Okay. Now we're actually going to have examples of inconsistent systems and all of that in the next group of examples. But for right now, we're going to solve systems using the elimination method. Systems of linear equations using the elimination method. Now, in some circles, also known as the addition method. It actually depends on the question. They may say solve using the elimination method or solve using the addition method. They are the exact same thing. Just different words for saying the same method. Now, this is the general idea behind it. 
let's say if you have A equals B, uh -oh, let's make that C equals B. If you add the left side, and you add your right side, you will end up with A plus C equals B plus B. Okay. So that's the general idea behind it. All right. So now we're going to move up. And we're going to have the steps to solve using the elimination method or addition method, aka addition method. Now your very first step is to write both equations in standard form. So clear that up a little, there we go. Write each equation. In standard form. And by standard form, it basically just means have all the terms with variables on one side and the terms without variables on the other. That's it. So you have some number times x plus some number times y equals some number that doesn't have a variable. Where a, b, and c are numbers. Two, and this is only if it's necessary. A lot of these problems, you won't need step two. Some of them you will. If necessary, multiply one or both of the equations. by a non-zero number so that the coefficient of the chosen variable are opposite. And by opposite, it really just means same number, different sign. So the coefficient can be, one could be positive four and negative, the other is negative four, one could be positive eight. You want the other to be negative eight. So you want them to be able to cancel out when you add them together. So opposites just mean same number, but different sign. Now the third step is you're going to add your equation. Okay, you're going to add the left side and you're going to add the right side. 
together. Now, once you add them together, one of those variables should disappear. It should cancel out if you did it correctly. Okay. Now, for your fourth step, you're going to use the answer from step three. To solve for the remaining variable. And then step number five, the very last step, is you want to check by plugging in those answers. It's not necessary, but it is a good idea if you're not absolutely positive so that step is optional all right so again if you're still writing go ahead and press pause but i'm going to go ahead and move on to the next or to the example All right, so let's say, for example, we want to solve the system using elimination. So the system, the first equation is negative 2x plus y equals 2. And your second equation is negative x plus 3y equals negative 4. Now you could easily solve for y on this one and use substitution, but we're not going to this time. It was actually saying use elimination, so that's the method we're going to use, just to make sure we get our steps down. That's the key. We want to make sure the steps are down, the process, we understand the process. Okay. So the first step, we want to make sure both equations are in standard form. Here, all of our x and y variables are on the left. So we're good for our first step. Already in standard form. Okay. So we're good for step one. Okay. Now step two. Let's say if we wanted to get rid of either the x variable or y variable. You have to get rid of one if we add them together. So let's just say if you wanted, you could multiply each term by negative 2 here. So you have negative 2x here, positive 2x here. So we cancel out the x. But just because we have to pick one, we'll pick y. Either one you pick, you will get the exact same answer if you did it correctly. Okay, so since this is our equation 1, and this is our equation 2, We're going to go ahead and get rid of the y variable just because. Like I said, either one would work. So you already know that. So we're going to multiply each term in equation 1 by negative 3 to get rid of the y variable. Okay, so you're going to rewrite you have negative 2x plus y equals 2. Just rewriting the system. Negative x 
plus 3y equals negative 4. So we're going to multiply each term in the first equation, which is our top one, by negative 3. Okay, so that means you have negative 3 times negative 2x plus negative 3 times y equals negative 3 times 2. Okay, so all we did was get every one of those terms and multiply it by negative 3. Okay, and just do it to 1, then you're changing the actual value. You have to do it to each term. And the second one, we don't even touch it. We just leave the same place. Negative x plus 3y equals negative 4. Okay, so if we have negative 3 times negative 2 to a negative 2x, that's positive 6x. So we have 6x, negative 3 times y, negative 3y. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And the second one, remember, we just left that one alone. So that's just along for y. Negative x plus 3y equals negative 4. Okay. Now, once we do that, now we have our opposite. We have a negative 3 here and a positive 3 here. So now we do our third step, which is we're going to add. So we go ahead and add those two together. We don't have to rewrite it. We can go ahead and do it right there on the spot. So 6x plus negative 1x is 5x. So negative 3y plus positive 3y is 0. So they cancel out, which is exactly what we wanted. So negative 6 plus negative 4 is negative 10. So this will give us 5x equals negative 10. So we just go ahead and solve for x by dividing both sides by 5. So we have x equals negative 2. Okay, so now we go ahead and go to our fourth step. which means we're going to use our answer from step three to solve for the remaining variable. Since we know that x is equal to negative two, we just go ahead and solve for y. Use x equals negative two, better yet, plug in, have it a little clearer, plug x equals negative 2 into either equation to solve for y. Uh oh, sorry about that. There we go. Okay, so if we pick the first equation, we have negative 2x plus y equals 2, and I only picked that one because y is by itself. You don't have to worry about all that dividing. Just easier. Easy. Okay. So we know that x is equal to negative 2. Okay. So that means negative 2, replace x with negative 2, plus y equals 2. Negative 2 times negative 2 is positive 4. So we have 4 plus y equals 2. Let me clear up my y a little bit. There we go. So if we subtract 4 from both sides, we know that y is equal to negative 2. That means your answer here, x equals negative 2, y equals negative 2, 
4, write it as an ordered pair of negative 2, negative 2. So hopefully that makes sense. We'll go ahead and do a few more examples. So if you're still writing, press pause. But I'm going to go ahead and move up to the next example. Okay, so let's say for our next example, solve the system. Using elimination. And let's say our two equations we have 2x minus y equals 7 and 8x minus 4y equals 1. So, of course, this is our equation 1, and this one is our equation. Sorry about that. Don't know why. Here we go. Take me hit a button there. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and solve that. Okay, so our first step, we want to have it in standard form. All of our variables are already on the left side. So it's already in standard form. Okay, now our second step. Remember, we want to have at least one of those variables have the same coefficient, just opposite sign. So we want those two to be the same number, just different signs, one positive, one negative. So when we add them together, it disappears. Okay, so let's say we got rid of the y in the other example. We'll get rid of the x in this one. So to get rid of the x, both of these would have to be 8. Well, one would have to be 8, one would have to be negative 8. So we'll turn this one into negative 8. So we're just going to go ahead and multiply each term in equation 1 by negative 4 to get rid of the x variable. That means, I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite what we're starting with. So 2x minus y equals 7, and 8x minus 4y equals 1. And we're going to multiply each term in the, the first equation. We have negative 4 times 2x minus negative 4 times y equals negative 4 times 7. So we just multiplied everything up here by negative 4. That's the key. Every term has to be multiplied, not just that one. Okay, and the second one, we're just going to leave that one the way it is. 8x minus 4y equals 1. Okay, which brings us to our third step as soon as we Simplify this, negative 4 times 2 is negative 8, minus negative 4, which is just plus 4y, equals negative 4 times 7, negative 28. And our second one, remember that, stays the same, 8x minus 4y equals 1. 
Okay, so we have our opposites. So we go ahead and do our third step, which is just to add. So we go ahead and add those two together. Negative 8 plus 8 is 0. Actually, that cancels out exactly the way we thought. But here, you have 4 y minus 4 y. This again is 0. It's a little bit different. So negative 28 plus 1 is negative 27. So that actually gives us 0 equals negative 27, which is false. Hmm. Now, if you remember before, when all the variables disappeared and we had a true statement, we know it was dependent. But this one, all the variables disappear, and we have a false statement. So when all the variables disappear and we're left with a false statement, we know that it's an inconsistent statement. Okay. So when all variables disappear, And you have a false, that's the key here, statement. But we all know that 0 does not equal negative 27. Uh oh, then there are no solutions. Actually, that would be your answer. No solution. Oh, let me move that up there because it's inconsistent. to the next example. Okay, so let's see, we want to solve the system. using elimination. And the system we are going to be solving is 3x minus 2y equals 2 and negative 9x plus 6y equals negative 6. Of course this is our first equation and this is our second equation. First step, already in standard form. Okay, all the variables on one side, all the terms without variables on the other. Okay, now we just have to get rid of one of those variables. Easy enough, if we multiply this by 3, we'll have 9 and negative 9. We just multiply everything up here by 3. Okay, so you want to multiply every term 
in equation one by three, we get rid of the x variable. All right, so we'll go ahead and do that. So first, I will write down where we're starting from, 3x minus 2y equals 2, and negative 9x plus 6y equals negative 6. Since we're going to multiply everything in the first equation by 3, that would give us 3 times 3x minus 3 times 2y equals 3 times 2. And remember, every term has to be multiplied by that value. And the second one, we'll just leave that the way it is. So negative 9x plus 6y so equals negative 6. There we go. So we know here that 3 times 3 is 9. So we have 9x. 3 times 2 is 6. Minus 6y equals 3 times 2 is 6. And negative 9x plus 6y equals negative 6. Okay. So let's go ahead and do our third step, which is just add. Go ahead and add those two together. Oops. Move that up a little. So we have 9x minus 9x is 0. Good. We have negative 6y plus 6y, which is 0. We have 6 plus negative 6 is also 0. So we end up with Zero equals zero, which is true. Okay. Now we had one earlier where once all the variables disappear and you're left with the true statement, we know we have an infinite number of solutions because it's a dependent system. Okay, so once again, when all variables disappear, and you are left with a true statement. And you have infinite solutions. And that's actually your answer because this is a dependent system. Now remember, as soon as you have a solution, it's consistent automatically. It's when all the variables disappear that you're either inconsistent or dependent. All right, so if you're still writing, press pause. But I'm going to go ahead and move on to the next example. Actually, do a quick explanation first and write down the example. 
exactly. So when fractions are involved, it is easiest to multiply each term. by the least common denominator to get rid of the fraction. Is the easiest way to solve a problem with fractions is to have no fractions there. Okay, so let's say for example, we wanted to solve the system using elimination, of course. Let's say you have 1 over 6 x plus 1 half y equals 1 third. And we'll get negative x over 9 plus y equals 5 over 9. Okay. Now, whenever you have fractions, first thing you want to do is you want to get rid of the fractions. So before you even start your step, over 9 plus y equals 5 over 9. You look here, the smallest common multiple of those denominators is actually 6. You have 6 times 1, you have 3 times 2, you have 3 times, well, 2 times 3 and 3 times 2. So all of those equal 6. So we know here, least common denominator to 6. And it's always easiest when the denominators are the same because your least common denominator is just going to be 9. Okay, so the first thing you want to do here, multiply each term by the least common denominator. Okay, so that means I just kind of separate it there. Using that squiggly line. So if the least common denominator is six, here you're gonna have six times one over six x plus 6 times 1 half y equals 6 times 1 third. Okay, now for the second one, at least common denominator is 9, so you're going to multiply each one of those by 9. We have 9 times negative x over 9 plus 9 times y equals 9 times 5 over 9. So if they have two separate least common denominators, you multiply each term by whatever the least common denominator is for that particular equation. Okay. But other than that, you're going to be adding and subtracting fractions left and right. It's going to be a real headache. So this is the easiest way. And that's because You look at equation 1, you have 6 times 1 over 6 is just 1, so you have 1x. You have 6 
times 1 half, which is basically 6 divided by 2, so you have 3y. 6 times 1 third is basically 6 divided by 3, so you have 2. Okay, so you have 9 times 9, well, times 1 over 9, basically. So those two cancel out, so you're left with negative x. You have 9 times y, so that's plus 9y equals those two 9s cancel out, so you're left with just 5. Now, once you get rid of your fractions, when you solve using elimination. Now, you could have went right to this very first step and solved using elimination, but like I said, Adding and subtracting all those fractions would have been a headache. So it's best just to get rid of it. Okay, so remember your first step. It's already in standard form. All your x and y vari variables are on the left. Now here, the second step is not necessary because you already have an x here, positive x and a negative x. So if you added them together, it would disappear. So you don't have to multiply them by anything. You're already good. So the second step in this case is not necessary. That's why I put that if necessary. Okay. Now your third step is where you just go ahead and add. So I'm just going to go ahead and rewrite it. Okay, plus 3y equals 2. Negative x plus 9y equals 5. So let's go ahead and add those two together. So x plus negative x is 0, so that cancels out. Just as we predicted it would. So you have 3y plus 9y, 12y. 2 plus 5 is 7. Okay, so if we divide both sides by 12, actually I'll probably leave that plus 12y equals 7 and we need to solve it over there. 12y equals 7. So we have 12y equals 7. And we divide both sides by 12 here. Anything divided by itself is just 1. So we have y equals 7 over 12. Okay. And once we have that, then we use our fourth step where we use this value of y to solve for x. Plug into either equation. To solve for x. Okay. Now, the thing is, we don't have to use the fraction equation. We can use one of these equations. Okay. That means x plus 3y equals 2. Okay, separate that a little. And y is equal to 7 over 2, plus 7 over 12. Sorry about that. And then just x plus 3 times 7 over 12 equals 2. Okay, so we've got x plus 3 divided by 12, that basically gives you 1 fourth, so that's 7 over 4 equals 2. So if we subtract 7 over 4 from both sides, that gives us x equals 
3 minus 7 over 4. So if we're going to go ahead and simplify that, x is equal to, instead of 2, to have a common denominator, we can make that 8 over 4, which is 8 divided by 4 is 2, minus 7 over 4. So we know that x is equal to 8 minus 7 is 1, 1 over 4. So your answer, x equals 1 over 4, y equals 7 over 12, or writing it as an ordered pair, 1 4 over 7 12. Okay, so hopefully that made sense. And I will see you on the next video. Happy math.